How do you define the church in the New Covenant? Well, that's the question that we're asking and going to seek to answer in today's daily devotion. I'm Pastor John Blevins. It's Wednesday, October 21st, 2020. I'm thankful that you're here with us for another devotion. We're doing a little mini season dealing with the church. And as I mentioned yesterday and a few days before that, I appreciate you uh, putting up with our audio only and shorter devotions as we're getting some things worked out. Well, let's hear from God as we always do. Let's turn to His Word to start off our devotion as we seek to answer this question. Turning in the New Testament to Acts chapter 2, I'm going to read a, a somewhat of a long portion, starting in verse 22 to 41. We come to Acts and we are going to step into. Uh, the middle of Peter's sermon at Pentecost, and we're going to work our way through uh, pretty much the end of it. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand and I that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet in knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who, who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. Well, that's one of several of the study passages down in the description. I encourage you to go back and read all of chapter 2 uh, to get the full context, that full sermon, everything that's happening there. Uh, I think you'll be thankful for doing that as you turn. Also, take advantage of the other study passages that are there. Read them, hear from God, go to Him in prayer, spend some time in fellowship with Him. Well, as we, we have heard from God, we're, we're seeking to answer this question. How do you define the church in the New Covenant? Well, we're going to utilize our theology portion to help us with that answer. Our theology portion is brought together uh, by these study passages as they function as kind of the undergirding for this. 
We're going to first turn to Westminster Larger Catechism, question 62, which asks, what is the visible church? The visible church is a society made up of all such as in all ages and places of the world do profess the true religion and of their children. I'm going to turn now to Westminster Confession of Faith, chapter 25, section 2. The visible church, which is also Catholic or universal under the gospel, not confined to one nation as before under the law, consists of all those throughout the world that profess the true religion and of their children and is the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ, the house and family of God, out of which there is no ordinary possibility of salvation. Oh Lord, we thank you for the gift of your church. And Lord, we thank you in living in the new covenant in this age that you have granted to us, those whom you've given life, those whom you have given the faith, whom you have graciously brought us into salvation. Lord, adopted us into your family. We are thankful. We love you. We praise you to be your people, to have our Savior, King Jesus, as the head of the church, that we might serve Him. This covenantal promise that is, as we read, being quoted by Peter in his sermon at Pentecost, uh, that this is a promise that is for our children and those far off. Lord, how wonderful it is to see Your covenant faithfulness throughout the generations. So we pray that You would be with us Help us to glorify you in all things and to grow as we spend just a little bit of time in the next couple of days looking at the church, your church. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's good to be with you all again for another devotion. Until we are together next time, may our great God bless and keep you.